The medical field is full of grifters. It's ridiculous and I hate it, but that's the way it is. And here are the top three reasons why most people don't know it. So number one, chronic illness forced me into becoming my own doctor and my own researcher. I was very sick and I had a lot on the line, so I really had to put in the work to figure out what's going on. So over the past two years, I've surveyed hundreds of patients to figure out what's working and what's not. And unfortunately, it turns out that the scientific literature differs a lot from the real world and doesn't really reflect what's happening. So the underlying reason is that most people just don't put in obscene amounts of time into doing research. And then number two, my survey research work has been packaged into accredited continuing education courses for medical professionals. So I actually know a thing or two about how medical education actually works in the real world. And number three, I'm one of the few people out there who can speak the truth because I have the financial ability to do so. I'm lucky enough that I don't have to work right now, so I could just say whatever I want and I don't have to worry about losing my job or anything like that. Unfortunately, I had to figure out all this stuff on my own, but you, you don't have to, so let's get into it. I'll start with the very beginning of my journey when I got very sick in June 2021. Long story short, I had to become my own doctor and researcher because the medical system in Canada is awful. Uh, to figure things out on my own. So in the beginning, I was naive and believed most of what I read in the scientific literature. But then I started putting the pieces of the puzzle together. So on my long haul wiki site, I compiled a list of what doctors were trying and data on how well those treatments were working. Their case reports and studies were all saying, everything works. I built a long list of supposedly effective treatments, everything from probiotics to stellate ganglion block. Everything is rainbows and puppies. And yet, real world patients weren't recovered. It turns out that treatments have very low response rates in the real world. So how does the gap between the scientific literature and patient experiences come to be? So one of the underlying problems is that researchers have conflicts of interest. Sometimes they don't even declare them properly. Professor Robert Thomas is an author of this paper on Phyto-V, a supplement product. The paper states that the authors declare no conflict of interest. But here's the issue. The opposite is true. The paper thanks KeepHealthy.com for the donated probiotics. And the KeepHealthy.com website talks about Professor Robert Thomas. It lists him as a medical advisor to the company. The same website has also advertised consultation services offered by Thomas. There are, in fact, undisclosed financial ties between Robert Thomas and the Phyto-V product being studied. So, unfortunately, most people haven't figured this out because they don't go that extra mile to figure out if something is credible or not. And let's go a little further down the rabbit hole. Right now, one of the most popular theories regarding long COVID is the Michael Klotz theory from Douglas Cow, Risha Pretorius, and other members of their Team Klotz group. They suggest that a combination of anticoagulant drugs should be used to treat long COVID. Their preprint on the topic makes a very bold claim that all 24 people who tried their so-called triple anticoag therapy recovered. It's like a magic cure, basically. I don't think that the research were researchers were expecting desperate patients to try the therapy on their own and to talk about the results on the internet. Here's a picture of somebody I know who tried blood thinning therapy. So it turns out the very, very few people recovered and a few people reported getting worse on that type of treatment. Survey data I collected in 2022 was showing problems with the microclots theory. Only 3 out of 24 people reported significant overall improvement in their symptoms after some kind of prescription blood thinner which doesn't at all line up with 24 out of 24 people recovering. The authors have since quietly removed their 24 out of 24 claim from their preprint, but there's more. The next version of the preprint called for randomized controlled trials on triple anticoag, but the paper makes no mention of their earlier data from the 24 patients. They went from claiming to have amazing results on 24 patients to not saying anything at all about these people, even though that data would be highly relevant to the recommendation of clinical trials. It's all very suspicious, and it's definitely not how science should be done. Now, people in the science world generally have an idea that questionable things happen and that most of the published literature is unreliable. They know that it's caused by various reasons, such as people playing games with statistics through p-hacking and other methods. They refer to the overall problem as the replication crisis. It's really a polite way of saying that there's a bullshit crisis. The world's most cited researcher, John Ioannidis built his career by writing about these problems in science. He has over 190,000 citations, according to Semantic Scholar. And YouTubers like Veritasium have made popular videos on the same topic, such as this one with 5.4 million views. 
The title and thumbnail say it all. Is most published research wrong? Yes. So the problem is well known. But researchers need to line up more research funding so that they can keep the job, which encourages them to fudge the results at least a little bit. And clinicians will put out misleading case reports to promote what they do. So really, the incentive in the system is to make the problem worse rather than better. So through experience, I've learned that medicine is full of grifters. But I've also learned that medicine doesn't have to be full of grifters. I can simply go out there and do science the way that it's supposed to be done. The internet allowed me to connect with hundreds of patients out there to collect data on what's working and what's not. The internet also allowed me to publish my research, research and to reach thousands of people. So the most popular video on my Odyssey channel has almost 5,000 views right now. And as far as my own health goes, I managed to recover. My fingers work normally now. I regained my ability to do computer programming. And patients like myself have recovered after we became our own doctors and researchers. Just look at the first video on this channel. It's kind of boring, but it shows that patients are figuring out what works and what doesn't. Some people are actually recovering. So the patients are accomplishing more than what the medical and scientific fields have done so far. All this makes me hopeful for the future because the world is changing. The internet, the information superhighway, will continue to change medicine and science. Patients are going to push standards a lot higher. It's going to be a lot harder to bamboozle the public as scientific knowledge becomes more accessible. Videos like this one will break down what's happening in plain English and provide insight into whether or not a paper is reliable. So let's get rid of the word grifter and replace it with the word hope. Chronic illness taught me that medicine is full of hope.